This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha Awina La. I'm Kawi Lucas. For the last couple of years, I've had the great pleasure of hosting Hawaii is My Mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii. Life is calling me to paddle other canoes. So to end this amazing chapter, I'm honoring the place where I began and which formed my understanding and abiding love and devotion to Hawaii, Eva Sugar Plantation. My guest today, Reginald Perry, also grew up on Eva Sugar Plantation and now owns and runs Barbers Point Aviation Services and Barbers Point Flight School. At the recent Eva Plain Battlefield commemoration event, Reggie gave a speech about his childhood there. It wasn't just a chicken skin good speech. It was a fresh from the emu, pulled off the chicken wire, fat dripping rich, crispy chewy, locally raised pork skin good speech. But unlike the prized bits of pork skin stuck on the wire, wrapped around the pig and the emu, I'm willing to share. Welcome, Reggie. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so that was that was quite an event where I met you. The, let, let's talk a little bit of it just about that to get that out of the way. The, the, it was a battlefield commemoration. People are going, what? There's a battlefield at Eva? What was that about? Yeah, no, that was the bombing. When they, uh, when they were on their way to Pearl Harbor, they decided to uh, make Eva an opportunity target. So that's one thing we have in current common. The house you grew up in had been hit, right? Yeah, debris flew through the roof, left a big hole in the roof that they lived with for a few days until Eva uh, repairmen came out and fixed the roof. <laughs> the house I grew up in also had bullet holes in the dining room. And uh, they were patched, of course, by the time I came along. But yeah. this goes to show that um, and there, were even, there were even fatalities at, at EVA. Yeah, yeah. Six Marines, I think, and uh, a few children, or one child. But some injuries. <clears throat> EVA Sugar Plantation goes way back. Way back. Way yeah. back. Yeah. And um, your family goes way back way there. Back. Yeah. You, you got mine beat by a couple generations. Yeah. So, so tell us a little about that. So on my mom's side, they came from Madeira on the USS Raven Scrag in 1876. And we still have the ship's logs, you know, of my family that came from Portugal. And then my dad's side came from England and then to Indianapolis and then also to Honolulu. Uh, and they started working for the plantation in 1905, my great-great-grandfather. And they started at Eva? Yeah, they started at Eva. Well, my, my mom's side, they started on Maui, Pu'unene. Well, Kauai and Pu'unene. And then my dad's side started right there in Eva, yeah, old Eva. So uh, the, the way that um, you, so, so you came along a little later. Yeah, a lot later. <laughs> So your Eva roots go from the, your great grandfather and your great grandfather, my dad, my, my my grandfather, my dad, and after my dad, there was no more Eva sugar mill. So that was it. How how late did you get to live on the plantation? 1966. We moved from Lower Camp, which was about right off of the old Fort Weaver Road, and then we moved into Tenny Village, right in Eva, in 1966. And I was born there at the new house. And, uh, well, I was born at Deva Hospital, uh, uh, and then we moved to the new house. You probably got your 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 vaccination shot there. Yeah, that, that, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. I got mine on my thigh because my mom said I don't want my daughters to have that ugly mark on their yeah, arm. Yeah, we always and, wonder what that was. <laughs> right. <laughs> Because uh, it was a small hospital, you could tell the doctor, no, I don't want it on my arm. I want it on the leg. I, I don't remember <laughs> being able to do that, but. <laughs> Yeah, it was a small hospital, but uh, it was a popular hospital, too. A lot of people were born there, including me, my sister, my dad. The, the, the quality of life that you spoke about in your speech is the thing that um, really resonated so deeply with me. I, when we moved away in 69 and, and far away, and so I didn't have that, that depth of of relationships that lingered in, in the town as you did. Your dad uh, was part of the Pauhana. Yeah, when, when they were redeveloping Evo toward the end, uh, he was the president of the Pauhana Association. That was before the associations came in and Evo what is what it is now with the, you know, a lot more regulated. <laughs> they, not, nobody's getting away with what they used to get away with. <laughs> Well, speaking of getting away with things, um, one of the things, I'm, I'm going to read a, 
uh, a paragraph from your from your speech. Um, okay. Um, Life in Eva was isolated, but it was a good isolation. It was like having a secret place to live. Families worked hard. People respected one another's right to live the way they wanted to, and with or without fighting chickens. No complaining about your neighbors, and if you had a problem, you worked it out. You worked it out. It was law and order without the necessity for law and order. It was a kind of like a marine base where everything was handled from within. Yeah, or army base or navy base. Yeah, everybody handled it, handled things among themselves. So, um, as you remember the uh, the playing and the children's groups and who got to do what and talk a little bit about what that experience was being a kid and the and the uh, I don't want to feed you the words so you talk about your experience of it what? yeah it was uh, growing up you mean growing yeah. up yeah it was like it was playing with the devil's tail it was heaven on earth it was ex exploration I like to explore we like to do crazy things I was only, one of only a few white dudes that grew up in Eva, so it wasn't easy, you know, for me, especially without an older brother to get my back. <laughs> so a lot of, lot of, you know, getting picked on a lot, but uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. I mean, Eva was the best place to grow up, especially if you're adventurous, because when the mill shut down, we would go into the mill and explore, climb, climb the tower, and do just, just do everything. You know, fruits was in abundance. You always had food. You always had cane. You know, we used to catch birds and eat them on weekends, and you were judged by the traps that you set and the birds that you caught by the end of the week. It was just a good time, and the people were all nice, you know, diverse. You know, we had, I had Japanese, Filipino, Portuguese all, all around our house, you know, where I think before that, they had, uh, they had separated everyone by nationality, I think. Until they, they, kind of by camps, yeah. Yeah, by camp. And there was Haole camp, Korean camp. Uh, then Tenny Village, uh, Verona Village, Hawaiian camp was on the other end. And then toward the end, everything was just, you know, merged together and everybody just got along, you know. I struggle sometimes with talking to people who don't have that experience to, um, it, it wasn't really until I heard your speech that I, that you kind of put it together so nicely. But there's that, there's that both independent, wild independence. I mean, when I think uh, that oh, at yeah. six years old, yeah, I had my yeah. own bike and I, I could ride for yeah, miles yeah, through yeah. cane fields. Yeah. And if you didn't know where you were going, you, get you lost. didn't know where you were going. Yeah. Easy to get <laughs> lost, yeah, I know. We would increase our boundaries too. We would play cops and robbers and army and we'd say this road to this road and sometimes it was like, you know, at least a mile. Yeah, so no, no, no I don't remember any pedestrian uh, you know, places, designated areas to walk. I don't remember any, I remember a few stop signs, but no traffic lights. I don't even remember seeing policemen in Eva, you know, when we were young, right? Yeah. Not until, maybe, yeah. the, maybe the cane police that would, you know, come by and they know your dad and they say, hey, go home. <laughs> <laughs> so there was this kind of uh, wild freedom on the one side, and yet somehow we knew there were boundaries really clearly, really clearly. Yeah. There was some kind of pressure, as you say, and yeah. um, so we didn't need the, that sort of external so much because... I think it was just different time. Things were just slower. You know, everything is so fast today. You know, I think, yeah, the technology just, just changes everybody. You know, we all part of our environment, and I think the way things were back then, technology wasn't, I guess, in, in hindsight, it wasn't what it was today. So. The more, in my opinion, as technology increased, things got simpler, and as things get simpler, people get more difficult. Because back then, they worked really hard. And the people that worked hard, like our parents and you know, everyone else, I think they had, they were more, they became more simple people. You know, I think there's an inverse relationship there. Well, certainly I can remember going out and um, when the rains came through, or you had to, um, move the ditches, uh, move the, the sluice gates and oh, the, uh, the, the water. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah. And, um, the irrigation guys would go, the yeah. The irrigation yeah. guys. But let's, uh, so behind us is a, is a picture of what it looked like from, from Malka looking across the Eva Plain yeah. towards, towards Waikiki. Yeah. And um, because uh, by the time I came along, my dad had worked himself up to, to, to be the manager. So we had a two-story house, and I... Yeah, you had the big house. The big house, the big house. Yeah. 
And um, so from the second floor, we could actually see. Um, oh, the second floor. <laughs> Right, we had the one second floor. floor. Yeah, <laughs> we could see the um, we could see all the way to Diamond Head, which I don't know that is is possible now. But <clears throat> but back to the to the quality of life. Let's let's um, show some of the pictures to, for people to get a feel. Um, it's it's almost like a, a magical town that if you don't know about it, people go what? That's yeah, there people that lived here their whole lives have, have never been through Eva. You know. This is a, a, a particular, one of the really pretty buildings there along Renton Road. So you knew it, yeah, we the, knew it as the, the Eva shopping, shopping basket. basket. Yeah. And so what are, what are your memories of... Oh man, stealing candy. <laughs> <laughs> going, st going straight to the back and eating the candy, turning in uh, bottles of 7-Up and Coke to Mr. Yasui, you know, for 5 and 10 cents. You know, the fishing area, when you first walked in, the IC, the IC uh, machine yes, was right the there to the left. Machine. And, of course, all the fishing gear where we would go and catch tilapia at Tanke, <laughs> the old reservoir. All the beautiful little lures and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah right there yeah. along the entry. Um, one of, I uh, still remember what it smelled like. It was always air conditioned. And, of course, they were always watching us kids when we walked in because they knew, they knew the deal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember that we, um, we used to buy beef by the by the side and leave it hanging. So we'd come in and mom would say, oh, we want this part of a... Yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember that. all the beef hanging in the back too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why just open up to this wide open, yeah. But Mr. Yasu would and keep the us away. Remember the egg man? The egg man, the milk man, yeah. 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 A little bit, I remember it, but I was really, really young. So by the time I recall, I don't remember him coming to the door, but I remember all the little chips, the milk chips. Yeah, my, I still have like a Folgers can full of those. Wow, yeah, nice. You, yeah, you have, to, uh, you have to trade the chip for the milk. <laughs> yeah, I we, think they had an allotment of chips per week or a month or however it was. So we put out the little, the little basket and yeah, the with iron. the empty bottles and they would fill them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like we're talking about 100 years ago, but... Unbelievable. We're yeah, talking. We're it's talking. Only 40. Yeah, it feels like for me, it feels like yesterday. I remember it as clear as day. I remember every little crack and crevice of the, the mill after it shut down. I remember where to make all my hideouts and where, where, where to hide. <laughs> so the, we have this, this beautiful little um, area. It's still there. It's really run down now. But if, uh, if you it's still possible to be seen. I don't, I don't know if you're not from Eva, if you can really get the feeling of it. But I went to a recent orchid show there. OK. Yeah, right there uh, at the school on Renton Road. Oh, and, at the school? Uh, yeah. And so have, have you driven through town recently? Yeah, I always go by. I, I, I even, I, every now and then, I like to go run my same route that I used to run. I like to reminisce. I like to smell the banyans. And just even though I'm living in Makakilo now, I just, yeah, I, just, I always miss Eva. I always go back. So um, we are going to take a little break right now, and then we'll come back and show some pictures of what it like, used to be like. OK, sounds good. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kawi Lucas, and with me today here in my Aloha Oi show is Reggie Perry, who, like me, grew up on Eva Sugar Plantation, but his family roots there go way deeper than mine. And um, what, what do you remember your, your, your dad and, and, your, and your grandpa? Um, what were their, um, what was really important to them? What do you remember of them in, in relationship to Eva? My grandpa was enjoying his retirement by the time I came along, but, uh, and then my dad's dad had quit and moved on somewhere else, but my dad had started in the 40s, I think 1945, 
when he was 13. And I just remember him, he rode his motorcycle every day. You know, I remember listening to the whistle, knowing when he was leaving, when he was coming back, when to turn off the TV. You know, I remember him working hard and coming home dirty every day with his scarf and, you know, his lunchbox. And just, just he was a simple dude, you know. He went to work, came home, and did what he loved, with, and that was being active with the church. Which church was that? Immaculate Conception Church. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he um, was really active. So that brings up a lot of the cultural things. I mean, it was a small community, and yet there was a lot of cultural yeah. uh, events that, that took place. Um, sports, can you talk about some of the sports? I mean, there was a lot of sports at Eva. The you know volleyball, what? I only, baseball. Yeah, see, I don't remember. The, my time, I remember baseball only. You know, we play, I played nine years. It was the old Bombers, the old Eva Bombers, be, before, it came the, before it became the Hurricanes, I think. Like I was saying in my speech, we, we had the chicken fight, uh, the chickens on our sleeves. I think we we were the only baseball team with that, with the fighting, uh, with the with the blade on the leg, and <laughs> that was the uh, the byproduct of our our longtime coach Bay Respicio. Here we go. So this is a this is an interesting picture. This is the, just what you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. That's so, uh, that's my old my uh, dad's I'm, old house. I want to mention that these this picture is part of an amazing collection that you can find online by Isamu Murakami. Uh, and if you Google my hometown Eva and Isamu Murakami, you'll come upon a treasure trove of old Eva plantation pictures. So what are we looking at? Oh, we all, That was my house. That house on the top left, that was my dad's house. That's where the debris after the bombing of the marine base had gotten through the roof. And the roof became compromised. And I remember spending my youth there with my grandma and my grandpa, you know, when parents would go to work. And that right in front there, that right now it's wide open, but before that it was, uh, we called it the sand pile. That was where the, uh, that's where they made the concrete, I think, and made all the uh, the, the flumes, the U-shaped. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's also where I got 48 stitches, you know, falling in one of them, falling on one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so did you get to ride in the flumes? Oh yeah, all the time, yeah. That was my favorite thing What was thing that like? Do. I mean, what is Oh, that flume? was crazy. You ride, we'd, we'd, we'd pack each other to one end, and then we drop out, we, we, well, we ride our bikes to run one end, leave the bike, and then pack each other to the other end. And then we jump in, ride it all the way to the end, take the bike all the way back. And how did you ride? What does that mean to ride in a flume? For uh, well, you can, you can doggy paddle depending if the flume was high. If it wasn't high, then you'd have to get on a rubber, old rubber tire <laughs> and bang the spiders off the walls as you, as you ride. <laughs> yeah, some days were good, some days not so good, depending on the, you know, the, the, the level of the water. But the, the reservoir was always there, so we always had some place to swim and always had tilapia to catch and little goldfish. Yeah, it was a good time, man. Uh, mango Road, you know, all the mangoes. Uh, every, I mean, it was, I, ask me anything. It was just the greatest place for a child to grow up, in my opinion. My kids still ask me about it all the time. They always <laughs> like hearing the stories. <laughs> mango Road was one of my favorite places to ride bikes also. And that, the park there was where we went to fly. Fly the, fly the fly, kites. Fly kites. Yeah. Which we made from the bamboo ribs of the of the um, umbrellas. Oh, that's yeah. Okay, that's that's, that's convenient. <laughs> we used well, to launch our rockets there with the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts. That was where the grandstands were. I mean, that was such a different <clears throat> time. When I was coming up, it wasn't. It was old and derelict already. But I know at one time, you know, in the 40s and 50s, I know that that field was pretty prominent on the island. That's where the carnivals were. I'm not sure when the carnival started, but I knew it was the, the largest carnival on Oahu. Yeah, um, speaking of that carnival, which was the largest carnival at the time, um, there were some very interesting events at the carnival having to do with fish. Tilapia fishing? <laughs> That's got to be the only place where the coordinators drained the pool to only the deep end and threw tilapias in, and you would actually fish with real fishing poles <laughs> Pull out the tilapia and, and win the prizes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of that going on. <laughs> Checkers in Pogo, Bozo the Clown. Uh, who's, who are those other guys? The, the, the big uh, teddy bear looking guys. The banana splits. Oh, yeah, banana splits. <laughs> yeah. And E.K. Fernandez always brought the good rides out there. It was a good time. I danced hula with a halal from Eva Beach, and we, I remember we performed at the, at the carnival, too. That was my, my first stage debut. Oh, my sister, too. <laughs> yeah, she trained in uh, yeah, Eva Beach with uh, Anderson. Anderson, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was oh. your teacher? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well. And that's where she made her debut, too. 
<laughs> yeah, those were the good old days. Truly, truly. Um, and there's this, I, um, you know, I heard you talk about your dad, who was also uh, one of the union guys. Who, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what was his official? He was the secretary of the ILWU, but I was a little young, so I don't know too much about it. And then he became the editor for the Hurricane, the Eva Hurricane. Yeah, so My dad I don't know really that active. he was that simple. <laughs> oh yeah, no, probably not. Yeah, without a doubt. So the Eva Hurricane was a was a um, was a, a, news a newsletter. Yeah, newsletter. Yeah, I think it was a monthly newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. And they would have, they would they would say who's who's who was born and you know who passed away. I guess we had our own obituaries and. And then the events like the the Halloween costume contest. Do you remember I, I that? I don't remember that one. I remember every year Christmas the sled coming around throwing yeah. candies. You remember the sled and the reindeer would bob up and down. And of course the bond dance twice a year at the old Japanese club and the Hongwanji. So the in 1966, um, you are too young to remember this, but um, the. Uh, Santa's sleigh, the when they were throwing out the candy, got stuck on our lawn. <laughs> I think that's where they launched it from, right? Isn't that where they launched the sled from? I don't know if they launched it from there, but that year, I, I was recently uh, looking at the pictures. Um, uh, yeah, Santa got stuck on our lawn. So that was a, a, a big year. So they, there was candy for, for months and It was and a months big deal. It was lawn. a really, really ornate um, sleigh. The, 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 I remember Rudolph moving up and down, and it was a big area for Santa to sit and throw stuff out, and i never forget that. That was a great time. And you talked about the, um, um, the bond dances. I think, I think this might be the only thing I have left um, from, from the actual, well, I mean, other than pictures and like the issues of the hurricane, but um, the bond dance was really one of the most fun, special events of the whole year. So this was the Eva Soto, and um, which was not, I mean, the taiko, the, the drumming and the dancing was oh, one yeah, thing, yeah. And, then, and then the foods. Yeah, the andagi, I love the andagi. I don't recall much else, that's pretty much all I ate. <laughs> It was a good time. We, we could just jump right in and dance. And, you know, I know it was mainly for the Japanese, but yeah, everybody got involved. Everybody and, got involved. Yeah. And that was, that, I think that was, that's kind of the point. You know, it was like, even if it was for one group or another group. Yeah, we, we just absorbed each other's cultures and just, just took it in and ran with it. And, you know, it worked out. Kind of made it our own special uh way yeah our yeah own flavor yeah. our own flavor of it yeah. but letting everybody as you as you say keep their their respective oh, traditions yeah. Yeah. and then yeah. and then there was this like an outer circle of of acceptance overall uh, i'm not sure what you mean what do you mean oh just this that um you know like you were saying about about the chicken fighting i i, I remember as a uh, as a kid, uh, my first experience of, of, of watching a cockfight, and um, wasn't like my parents took me to one, but um, you ended up there. <laughs> I ended up there because yeah. we were spending the night in one of the villages. At, at, and that's where at, the food was. That's where the good food was. <laughs> and sometimes, um, I mean, it was shocking in a way, but it was also yeah. exciting. It's such a it's such an event, you know. Yeah, yeah. And if you're able to mm, maybe allow that filter of, okay, what is the greater context of this event? Um, and not just say, oh my God, what are they doing to those poor chickens? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, 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 I understand the, the cruelty to animals. Um, but that's all they I knew, that was their culture. That's, right. They were exercising right. their culture. So where we've, we've grown up and now we, we, we don't do that anymore. Um, or we do, but we don't know much about it. It's all clandestine. Right. Well, I'm not advocating cruelty to animals. I just want to say that. Oh, but, me neither. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, with the acceptance. Yeah, everybody just, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Everybody lived and let live. Yeah. And if you had a nice wooden, like my dad put up a nice wooden fence, and I th he had a wooden post with chicken wire, but it was the wider chicken wire, and I thought, wow, we had the nicest fence in Elbow. You know, 
<laughs> and then some guys that didn't want fences just put up aluminum corrugation, and that's and everybody just did their own thing, and nobody cared. I think it was because nobody really had an interest in. I mean, it wasn't their homes. We paid thirty-eight bucks a month for the house, one dollar for water. You could call anybody at any time. They'd come and fix your plumbing, fix the roof. So I think. Maybe I think you know that might have had something to do with it because it wasn't you know everybody was had free housing because they all worked for the plantation so nobody was bogged down with that you know trying to make their area beautiful to increase property values like like today and everybody that is, I think that contributed to acceptance you know and people just that's why it was so good and you cannot get that anymore you know once your neighbor starts putting up corrugation or you know raising chickens then it starts raising the flags and back then it wasn't like that at all. You would walk in anybody's yard and pick fruit, and most of the time nobody would care and scold you until you took too much. <laughs> I remember my mother making me go, and um, because I had taken some mulberries from the neighbor's um, bush, uh, go back and, and knock on the door and ask. <laughs> so, <laughs> I remember the blackberries behind your guys' house. Yeah. Blackberries yeah. and strawberries. Did you, did you know about the, the macadamia nut tree? Yeah, we had one right around the corner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Take the hammer, break them. Exactly. Peel off the rocks. green skin first. Right. Yeah. And then if you got them too early, there wouldn't be a macadamia nut at all. It would just be white stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I I can't even begin to list all the different kinds of fruit trees that were around. Oh my God! Five finger, vivi, every m mango Everything. you can think of, tangerine, orange. Lychee. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, those were the days. So Reggie, we have one minute left. Can you believe it? And um, I just uh, want to know if there's um, anything else um, about those days that you you want to talk about. And uh, uh, no, I just have a, you know I I try to tell my kids all the time that uh, you know the millennials they're always labeled you know millennials and I and and, and you know the some of what is that other word entitlements everybody you know feels the children nowadays are like that but I think uh, just try to we I hold on to what I remember and I try to pass that on to them as best I can but I only have them for so many hours a day and when they go to school they end up doing you know their own thing so. I would say hold on to the past and pre preserve your memories as best you can, like that guy does with the with the pictures. Yeah, um, there's a, an interesting way that you've put it together. Is that 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 today we don't have those kind of entitlements, but back in the day, you know, there was housing and people weren't so hard up to to make ends meet in that way. The basics were taken care of yeah, in a way. Yeah. And yet there was still a deep sense of personal responsibility and pride in what we had, even yeah. though we didn't own it. Yeah. I mean, we certainly didn't own the house, and we came, came with a job. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 Everybody, we appreciated everything back then. I mean, from, from the time I was young, when I had my first bike, I mean, that was everything. Thank you so much, Reggie, and thank you so much, ThinkTech, for making the last couple of years a very exciting place.